Hey, good morning, Northside. Pastor Tim here. Um, I was uh, having some issues this morning with being able to go live via Facebook, so I have decided to uh, record the video and post it that way. So I wanted to just uh, welcome all of you uh, for to here uh, to being here. Um, I've got uh, got me some coffee, so I'm ready to go here, and I want to just share a few things with you. I want to begin by uh, just taking a moment to pause and pray the Lord's Prayer. So if you know this prayer, I invite you to join with me in praying this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this morning I wanted to uh, just share with you um, Psalm 85. This is a psalm that I have been reading this week and has a great message to it. And I believe there's some things in this psalm that will speak to you, that will encourage you. And so I wanted to just share this psalm with you again. It's Psalm 85 and I'm reading it from the NIV, the New International Version. It simply says, You, Lord, showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Again, that's Psalm 85, and I've been encouraged by what I've been hearing in God's Word in Psalm 85. One of the lines that spoke to me this morning was verse 6. It's the question that the psalmist asked, ask, and it says, Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? And I can't help but wonder if that's a question that maybe some of us are asking and thinking, thinking about right now is God reviving us again so that we may rejoice in him. We've been through a lot. We're going through a lot. We have a lot on our minds. We're anxious about a lot of things and we just need revive. Some of us are worn down. I, I have a lot of pastor friends that are really worn out. And I've talked to many of you that belong here to Northside and you're tired, you're, you're feeling uh, overwhelmed by things and we need to be revived. And thanks be to God, he gives us his Holy Spirit to, I think, re-energize us and get us excited about you know, what God is doing. Um, even in the midst of a pandemic, God is still active, God is still at work. And I take great, uh, I'm excited about that. And I see God doing things, answering prayers. Um, sometimes it's in the big things like healing. You know, I think of Dayton Kaiser and how we've been praying for him and just uh, how God has worked, how God has answered the prayers. And I'm very thankful for that. And um, I know the Kaisers are thankful for that. They sure appreciate, you know, the church praying for them. But there are also little things uh, where somebody maybe just feels encouraged. They read something in scripture or they hear from somebody, um, a text message is sent, uh, a phone call is made, an email. They read an email and something encourages them. And it's something small, but you know, God works in those small ways too as well. 
Well, this week's Advent theme, we're in Advent, this week's Advent theme is joy. And Pastor Stephanie is going to be sharing the message with us this Sunday. And I know she's got a great message planned. One of the scripture passages that uh, um, goes, for, goes with this Sunday is found in the New Testament in the book of 1 Thessalonians. And it's chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. And I wanted to share these scriptures with you. There's a lot of good things here. There's also a lot of verses that you could easily memorize because they're very short. But I wanted to share this with you beginning at verse 16 in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It simply says, Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. I just wonder what speaks to you in this passage of scripture. What's God wanting to say to you through his word? I, I love verse 16, rejoice always. Rejoice always. I know there are moments in my life where it's easy to rejoice. There's something that happens that just one of our kids does well in school or um, does something kind hearted, and it's just, you know, it, rejoicing's just, it's easy. But there are other times where it's more difficult, where somebody gets sick. Um, you know, we're trying to figure out how to navigate the holidays and you know, do we gather with family? Do we not gather with family? Um, in those moments, in those times, it's harder to rejoice in the Lord. But then Paul follows that up with praying continually, asking us to pray continually. And then it leads right into verse 18, to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So those words too are speaking to me. I, I don't know if any of that speaks to you or not. I hope it does. I hope it encourages you. I hope it challenges you too as well, because that is one of the ways God does his work in us. One of the ways that I'm finding joy amidst this pandemic is in reading, and not just in reading scripture, but also in reading other books um, some of those books about scripture, sometimes books that are just a good story. Um, I shared with you last week, but I have been uh, working my way through N.T. Wright's Simply Christian. I finally finished this book up, and um, this, was a, this was a great read. If you are someone searching for the truth or you know someone that is searching for the truth, that's hungry for God, um, is hungry for more, I, I recommend this book. It's a, it's a challenging read, and... I think the things that uh, N.T. Wright talks about in this book speak to those that are seeking, um, to those that maybe haven't placed faith in Jesus, but are on a hunt for something more. I think this book would be a good read. And it was also a great reminder for me of just some of the things that we believe, the basic things that we believe about Christianity. Well, since I finished that book, I'm going to be moving on to a new book, and uh, I'm going to be reading a, something a little bit differently than what I normally would read, but trying to read for fun. Here's a great story. This is J.R.R. Tolkien's. Um, this is The Two Towers. So this is the second book in his trilogy, um, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, the first one, The Two Towers, and then this is followed by Return of the King. But uh, I'm looking forward to reading this book. I have not read this um, yet. I've read The Hobbit many times. That's one of my favorite books. But uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy follows The Hobbit. And so I've read the first book, um, read that uh, back, I think, in February or March. But now I'm moving on to The Two Towers. Really looking forward to this. This is bringing me joy, reading these good stories. Well, I hope that you can find some way to experience joy, some way to rejoice um, that you will continue to pray and you will continue to give thanks to God in all circumstances and uh, enjoy a good cup of coffee or a good cup of tea. Well, hey, this is Pastor Tim. Have a wonderful day. 
We love you. We're praying for you. If there's a specific way I can pray for you, please leave a comment. Please let me know. And I hope to see you all on Sunday. God bless.